and welcome to the Write the Book Inside You podcast. Tips, tools, and interviews for coaches and healers like you who want to write a non-fiction book to boost your visibility, clients, and cash flow while making a difference. I'm your host, Carol Westmore, a multi-published author and energy psychology tapping book coach. Now let's jump into today's episode. My guest today, Alinka Ratkaska, is the CEO of Leaders Press, and she makes it easy for entrepreneurs to write a book from scratch and turn it into a bestseller. I'm going to ask you, Alinka, for the secret of how you do that in a minute as you tell us your story. And then I would like to look at your personal perspective on how you do what you do and what I call the inner game of writing and life. So go ahead, tell us how you got to be where you are and whether you, in fact, have written any books. Well, thank you so much for having me, Carol. Yes, I have written books. I actually started after leaving the corporate world. And while I was still in the corporate world, I wrote my first book. That was over 10 years ago. I guess I was going through some sort of quarter life crisis uh, because I didn't feel like life was all about doing corporate work that I didn't necessarily feel passionate about. And so I started this book that I did feel passionate about and I found out about self-publishing. I did that and my royalties from the book exceeded my corporate salary, which is when I decided that I'm not going to do the corporate thing anymore and I left. And from then I was sharing what I was doing for my book on social media and people started coming and asking me to do the same for their books. So that's how it started. And then I uh, packaged everything in 2017 into what is now Leader Express, where we help entrepreneurs turn their book ideas into bestsellers through interviewing them and uh, ghostwriting the book. And then we launched the book on the bestseller lists like USA Today or Wall Street Journal. And we've helped more than 500 entrepreneurs create share their stories with the world. And 172 of those have become USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestseller, bestselling authors. And we're also able to get their books into bookstores through our partnership with Simon & Schuster. So we've come a long way since that one self-published book, you know, to helping hundreds of entrepreneurs and doing all these bestsellers and getting books into bookstores. Yes, thank you. So we love to hear the success of it all, but was there a moment or is there something you wish you'd known before you started? Because I know you had been in the corporate world. You wrote a book about wanting to transition, I think, out of that. 10 years later, you are where you are today. So give us maybe a a big um, challenge you had to overcome along the way and lessons you've learned. Well, there are always challenges, some smaller, some bigger I grew organically. So I guess the first challenge or mental mind block was uh, starting to work with somebody on the team. So going from that solopreneur. So the first block was leaving the entrepreneur, well, leaving the corporate world. So going from corporate and having a fixed salary, that's comfortable into, hmm, well, yeah, I mean, I can't make my own money, but, you know, there's no security uh, in that. But so, so that's the first thing. That's the first mental block or challenge that I overcame. Then it was from going, going from solopreneur to starting to work with a team. And that was my first assistant. So that was a game changer, starting to work with one person to help me. Because now I understand that if you don't have an assistant, you are your assistant. Obviously, you're doing that role. But that is a mental mindset shift, I think, in two ways. One is that you're actually paying this person. So it's an investment. So you need to understand that this is an investment that frees up your time and allows you to invest your mental bandwidth into higher level activities that bring in even more revenue for the business. And it's also a matter of uh, letting go control or some of the control and trusting. So depending on what your assistant is doing, like they're doing something you used to be doing. So you need to be able to come to terms with that. And starting with one, now we're... 30 people on the team or even more right now. I, I never did the writing for other people. So I always had a um, ghostwriter, but basically from being the marketing person and salesperson and PR person and 
um, IT person and, and my own assistant. I was doing all these things to now hiring all, of, all these roles and being the conductor of the orchestra. Mm. So it's a continuous growth. Um, I'm constantly growing and, and learning and expanding. And it's uh, just... Uh, and in, in, your day, in your day-to-day life, the habits and mindset, I believe you have some practices that I was quite interested in. And my listeners, um, my audience, who are often healers, coaches, um, and interested in the inner game, could you give us some of your best practices, please? I'm, mm. I'm guessing on one, which if you don't mention, I'm going to bring up, but you tell me yours. Okay. Um, well, I do have a uh, morning routine and a routine throughout the day that I stick to. So that's what my calendar looks like in terms of various activities when I do what. But for me, uh, the morning time is really, really important. I start the day with meditation. So that's super important, really gets me balanced uh, and ready for the day. If for any reason one day I don't meditate, it's... Uh, it almost never happens, but it's just uh, not that good a day. So I need to start with meditation. And I do it throughout the day as I feel the need, because uh, it doesn't take me so long, with like 10 minutes to feel like all is well. Mm. <laughs> but during the day, I might uh, need to regain that balance. So, so I will. I'm going to find a spot to do that and um, super important for me. I do have exercise that I do uh, every day. And that keeps me sane and healthy and fit. I I write a lot. A lot of um, my, I journal throughout the day. Do you? Do you you journal your thoughts? as I journal my thoughts. Questions. I mean, like if something comes up, do you journal? Uh, How should I handle this or? Tell us I about don't know, uh, I guess what's predominantly on my mind. And I also listen to a lot of inspirational videos. So when I resonate with something, I'm going to put that there. And when mm-hmm. I have a moment during the day, like a lot of people, when they have a free moment, they go to social media and scroll. Mm. I go either to listen to some more inspirational stuff or uh, open up my journal and read what I wrote uh, in the previous days and find something that, feels really good and focus on that. So I'd like to reach out for that, for a better feeling and better thought or better feeling thought as much as I can. Um, And I believe you love the sea and you live in Italy. mm -hmm. And I've read that or heard you say that one of the best parts of your day is looking out over the bay. Tell us where you live and also the cold water swimming part of you, which I related to a little bird told me about that. One okay. of your, <laughs> Grace O'Donnell, who I interviewed on my summit, All mentioned right. it, and it's something that I'm committed to. So I thought I'll ask you about that. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, so when I said exercise, that exercise is horseback riding and um, swimming. It's not winter anymore. In winter, I would say cold water swimming, but it's getting warm. So it's no longer cold. So it's warm water swimming right now. Uh, but I basically swim every day all year. And so it's gradual. You know, I don't do anything drastic. I swim in the summer. And then as the temperature uh, goes down, I continue swimming. So I don't really have too many excuses. Like I went the day before, so I'm not going to go in today. And this way I, you know, push through the whole year. And there's a group of us. So it's also, also it was a great way to meet people. Um, and, you know, people of a certain mindset, you know, you're not going to get just anybody uh, throwing themselves into cold water. So this is really a great way to do something together. You know, imagine a terrible day, raining, wind, people sitting at home saying, "Ugh, uh, this weather sucks. And I meet with my girlfriends and we go in together and we go through this thing together and we are hit by all these endorphins and other chemicals Mm. uh, that come through that and then we go back inside and have a tea party and hang out Uh, so it's you obviously don't do this first thing in the morning i believe you also do qigong when do you actually get the time in your day to go swimming like lunchtime or a little bit in the afternoon so i segment my day i have segments tell us about that sorry I'm, i'm switching now from you know, a very interesting part of your day to your productivity and segmenting. Tell us for for the listeners, how can you be more productive by doing that? And how do you do it? Well, I have blocks of time uh, and it really works. Today I didn't go swimming and I, and the time just sort of poured through that time slot. Anyway, I would have done the same amount of work 
uh, if I had one. So basically I wake up, do my morning routine, and then I have a chunk of time to uh, get the day going and the business going. So I do the most important, the most impactful stuff for the business, just the 2080, making sure that things get taken care of, that people are doing what they committed to and that we're moving in the right direction. So really the big, big things. And then I go horseback riding. Then I come back, uh, have lunch, take a nap. And uh, then I usually have another segment of uh, work on the computer and then segment of meetings. Yeah, I was going to say, is that because you're in Italy and like me in the UK at the moment, your your time, you have to leave your afternoons for Americans and for the the rest of the world. So you kind of have a little break and then get back to what's their morning. Exactly. So that's it. Then I then I swim and then I my evenings are always booked for for the U.S. So it's just every evening I have meetings uh, okay. until dinner. So uh, because of my time zone, that's how I structured it. Okay. But I also have uh, you know two big two breaks because you know one for the horseback riding and one for swimming during the day, which uh, allows me to be super productive when I'm at my computer. So I don't have, I don't do any social media. I don't do any daydreaming when I'm, when I'm actually in my working slot Mm -hmm. and I hardly do any social media at all because I don't think that's very useful, but we do do social media for the business only it's not me. Obviously. And and what about your family time? You haven't mentioned that, but I I don't know if you keep that out of your interviews, but I believe you have two daughters. Daughter and a son. A daughter and a son. Okay. So tell us a little bit about how your family fits in. Is your husband well, away a lot? I, I, I believe, again, yeah, I've, yeah. I've done some research that he... I see works. you have. <laughs> yes. So uh, kids go to school. So they're usually all set until four o'clock. And then they I'll pick them up from school and I'll take them with me for the swim. Oh, or they'll nice. hang out at the playground that's really close while I swim. So they'll be there. And then the evenings... They're either with their dad when their dad is here because he works on cruise ships, so he's home for three months and then away for three months. So when oh, okay. when 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 my husband is here, super easy because he takes care of them. When he's not here, I need some more organization. So it's either grandparents or a babysitter or now they're bigger, so they can also hang out by themselves as long as they're not too noisy when I'm doing podcasts. Uh, but yeah, uh, it becomes more complicated, but the, uh, everything everything fits in. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, and and that super organized um, way of looking at things. What about once we've written a book? Now, a lot of us, um, and I include myself, who are healers who want to get out a message to the world, we may be service providers or coaches, maybe not in the level of the top entrepreneurs. How do we? In the old days, 10 years ago, we could just write our book and tell people about it and it would sell, correct? But now there's a lot of um, thought that goes into choosing titles and then promoting your book. Can you give us five tips for promoting our book? Okay. Well, the first tip is to make sure that you write a book that there's an audience for. So you need to make sure your book fits into a category that already exists. So there's an audience and stands out as well. So you have a unique selling proposition. And then you actually want to write a good book that people will read. (laughs) So it is important. Three, the cover really has to stand out. So you want to look at other best-selling covers in your category and make it look like it was created by the same team. Four, you really need to be able to position that book uh, in a way that's optimized for online sales. Because Amazon is a search engine, you want the book to pop up when somebody's looking for an answer to their question. And five, you really want to orchestrate your launch. So give it a lot of thought and make sure that there's a lot of activity going on during the launch. And then later that will uh, allow those sales to keep going. So here's your high level view. I have a mastermind that I run and we spend, you know, years talking about these things, but here you go. Yeah. And also, and, you know, outsource your book is something that you offer everyone, particularly entrepreneurs, but I'm sure it would help anyone who, who has is thinking of the book because it'll probably, you tell us what's in it that could help yes. anyone writing a book. Yes. Thank you. So an outsource your book, which you can get when you go to leaderspress.com slash discover, you're going to get your copy. Um, we explain the 17 step process to creating or outsourcing the creation of a best selling book. It was originally an entrepreneur article, article on entrepreneur.com. And then I 
developed the ideas and now you've got it in a book. And I believe that it attracted a very high level client was attracted by that book. Tell us that story. Yes. Well, you know, the book was optimized for online sales. So when uh, the co-founder of DHL International was looking for uh, resources on writing a book that popped up and he opened it. He, he actually ordered the paperback. I saw he had a sticker for his library. The book had a number in his library. There was a link to go to my calendar. And uh, then I saw the booking on the calendar and I was like, DHL? <laughs> like, who from DHL? And then I saw the co-founder. Uh, so <laughs> They're not was, making a delivery. <laughs> that, yeah, it was pretty, pretty surprising. I remember it was on holidays when that came in. I was like, wow. So that's why you need a book, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and you need a lead magnet because that's what's what we call a lead magnet as well as writing the book inside you. Thank you, Alink. Is, is, there, is there one last thing you'd like to tell people who are listening to my podcast called Write the Book Inside You and starting going back to when you wrote your book and I believe you wrote some children's books. Why is it important to put your, your heart into a book that's calling? Well, because you will... Uh, do two or three things. One, you're going to help a lot of people who are looking uh, for help and only your way of showing how to do that will resonate. So there might be other books on the topic, but only your way of explaining will get into their hearts. They'll get it. Uh, It's a way for you to immortalize yourself and it's a way for you to grow your business or your presence. So these are just the three reasons why. Yeah. What about leaving a legacy as we get into the older years, there are people who want to make sure, I think that's a, a last point, that what they've stood for incorporated into this book that they can hold and pass on. Well, that is one of the two main reasons why we do books. So we do lead generators to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses and these legacy pieces like we did for the co-founder of DHL, DHL International so that you can tell your story. And it's a phenomenal way to have control of how people will remember you. Fantastic. On that note, I'm going to leave in the show notes how to get your book, outsource your book. And thank you, Alinka. It really covered uh, an insight into you and into your business. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me, Carol. So great. And now for a word from the sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by the upcoming best-selling book, The Inner Game of Writing, where I have collated the golden nugget wisdom of renowned transformational healers like Brandon Bays, writers like Dr. Joe Vitale of The Secret, and publishers like Mark Allen to help authors and creatives like you tap into your brilliance by upping your inner game in life and writing. Thanks for joining me on today's podcast. Want a free gift to inspire you further on your book writing adventure? My free checklist five book hook tips to kickstart your book writing journey will help you get clarity on the key essentials to make your book a winner. Download it at writethebookinsideyou.com forward slash free gift. The links are in the show notes. Until next time, a big virtual hug and keep writing.